In this lesson, we're going to add a floor to the cabin, maybe the roof, and there's a little panel that like uh, sits just above the, the roof line. So what I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to come up front. I'm going to grab that little platform we made earlier for the front section. I'm going to shift, drag it back to the back of the train as a copy. Zoom in. I'm going to move it up a little bit so it meets with the bottom of the uh, side walls there. And we're going to adjust as we go. And I'm just going to take the scale, scale it outward, move it a little bit, just going by eye. Move it forward, let's do that. Let me take a look from down here. Let's pull it down. Oops, F3 so we can see better what we're doing. There we go. Okay. Yeah, grab a couple of verts. Let's just grab these with the marquee move tool. We'll shift them back so they come to the back of the side walls, just like that. Okay. So we repurpose that as opposed to building a new one, and it's not looking bad. Get these verts over here are sticking out a little bit. Okay. So there we go. Now we have that there. Let's go for the roof. We're going to go to top viewport. See the outline of the cabin. I'm going to make a plane. I'm going to go to uh, create geometry, standard primitives, plane. And I'm just going to go in the top viewport and make something a little bigger than the actual cabin itself. Should have the same distance around the edge. You can see the orange. I'd say that's good. And let's go to perspective. There we go. I'm going to move this up just like that, Maybe a little higher. And the last thing I'm going to do is control and click on the side walls while the, the roof is still active and selected. And now I'm going to Alt and Q. And now we have everything we want to see on the screen selected. This plane I feel should have more um, segments. So I'm going to go with uh, 8 that way and leave 4 in the, in the other direction. So. Uh, right click convert to editable poly to use a bend modifier okay and start turning that angle let's see X is the direction I'm just gonna do this right here it's close to what we want a little bit more there we go it's good it's a little small for the size of the cabin now that we did a bend to it, but that's not a big deal. I'm going to just go above, editable poly, so I'm going to go into modifier list, hit E. We're now in the edit section, editable poly, edit poly. Uh, edge, I'm going to select this row, Alt L for uh, loop selection. Shift and drag that down, and then simply pull it out with your move. There we go. Has a nice little overlap, which I believe it would keep the rain off the conductor. Let's do the same on this side, Alt and L, Shift and drag, and then just simply move it out like that. Okay, that looks good. And now um, we're going to take this edge and this edge, Alt and L for loop selection. Um, we're going to do a loop selection and we're going to chamfer it. Right click that to zero it out just do this that looks good to me so okay we're going to do that along the front edge as well we're going to use the same chamfer setting just make sure you use a dialog it looks good okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to come back here we're going to select a few edges right across like this I'm leaving that last polygon unselected and i just want to check my reference really quick for a second Okay, okay, yeah, that looks good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift and drag this set of edges back, back this way, just like that. I'm going to do it again, just like that. That looks good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to vertex selection. I'm going to select these two and the same two on the opposite side. There we go. And I'm going to uh, shift and X to turn on edge constraints. There they are. I'm going to scale. I'm going to scale them 
right here with the X manipulator. There we go. I'm going to deselect the front two, just like that. And I'm going to continue to scale the back two just a little more, just like that. Okay. So now we have a basic shape for the roof, but we're going to subdivide this. So we have a little more work to do. What I'm going to do now is select some edges. Um, I'm going to do these two. Um, we couldn't, we can use loop selection, but what will happen is we'll get loops that we don't want to. So I'm going to do it manually um, because we're using edges from different directions. See, we turn a corner here. The uh, loop selection may not work perfectly. Well, definitely won't work perfectly. We'd have this set and any other set that's continuous um, selected. So now that we have that little selection, we're going to chamfer it. And we have the same value we used earlier, which is what we want. We're going to say OK. And this is, this is going to make some curves on this mesh. But what you see what happened here is we have a triangle. And this is not a huge deal. I'm going to select that edge. Let's go on the other side. Is the same result on the other side. Zoom in. Sorry about that. We're going to zoom in right to there. OK, we have them selected. And to get rid of that triangle, we'll just simply collapse and then see it's a little closer in, into the corner than it should be. So shift and X is on, I believe, edge constraints. Let's make sure it is. Let's just move that vert up, move it forward. There you go. The spacing looks better. Same on the other side. Zoom in, Z, back, a little bit up. There we go. And let's do this. Above this edit poly, we'll uh, add a shell from the modifier list, shell modifier, like that. Um, it's about an inch, which is the sidewall dimension as well. So we'll say OK for now. We'll give it um, three segments. And let's go above this with a turbo smooth. OK, from your modifier list. And now let's make it two iterations. And you can see that has a nice detail. That's how some of the terrain roofs look. It's really like an interesting piece. And it was really simple to make. You can see that just by the order we chamfered and the way we chamfered by doing this selection and the selection here and then doing all of these as one this diagonal introduces a curve which is averaged out between this set of vertices and this so this becomes a curve and the same happens back here because of that diagonal we have a curve if this were an edge loop that continued parallel to the other one this would be squared off so um, after a while you get used to how that works so then now that that's the roof and it looks really good I'm glad we got it perfect on the first try. We're going to call it cabin underscore roof dash 01. Okay. And with that, I'm going to pause the video. The next video, there's another little panel that goes above this one. And what we're going to do is use the same technique with the conform brush. We're going to make a, a plane and we're going to conform it to the roof. So I'm going to pause the video and we'll pick it up there.